Hi friends, welcome to day 17 of Advent. Day 17 brings us one of the most difficult questions that was asked during me asking you guys questions. So I'm excited and terrified. Today's question comes from Michael Chen and Michael asked the differences between current day books and classic ones. And I asked for clarification because there's a lot there that you could go over. And he said to address common assumptions like classics are boring or irrelevant versus modern day books focus more on being page turners than on being worthy of literate cool things. A. Why am I personally attacked right now? Um, so if you've been here before, you know that classics are not my jam and I don't typically love them because I find them boring. However, there are a few exceptions. I have three classics that I love, that I read and actually enjoyed, that I feel like I got something out of, that I actually did more study on uh, learning about the histories behind them, the theorizing, the actual literature part of it. And they are uh, George Orwell's 1984, which I cannot for the life of me find my copy of. I need to buy a new one because I would love to reread it and zero idea where my copy is. Also Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. These books deal with, especially Fahrenheit 451 and 1984 are very similar in that they deal with a society where the populace is not supposed to have a lot of information about what's going on in their government and their society. Basically you just believe whatever the government has told you to be true and you have to live your life based off of that and you're not supposed to ask questions, you're not supposed to try to educate yourself, you're not supposed to do things that they don't want you to do. I love that aspect of it. I need to watch that Michael B. Jordan movie why have I not watched that? That is a gorgeous man. <sighs> Why have I not watched that movie? Uh, hello, here we are. I have both a 50th and 60th anniversary edition of this book. Like, I legit loved this book. So, opposingly, both Fahrenheit 451 and 1984 are futuristic novels that are set, I mean, 1984 was set in the future, in the time that it was written, even though it is in our current past. You get what I'm saying. It was a futuristic novel and this was also a futuristic novel. Um, the Scarlet Letter is more from our past. It takes place during the Puritan past and the history of America. The Scarlet Letter, though it is historical, also follows some things that are still an issue today in that it follows a woman who is married but her husband has been missing for a long time and while her husband is away she ends up pregnant. So like, how did she get pregnant? She's married. It obviously isn't her husband's child. And because they're Puritans, she obviously is a witch and the devil all in one human body. And she is being basically ostracized for being a, an adulterer, which the Scarlet Letter is an A. They put a Scarlet A on her chest to label her as an adulterer. And basically she's like the trash of society despite the fact that there was a man who willingly slept with her and had relations with her because obviously that child wasn't just spawned out of her uterus all upon its own. And it goes to show like even to modern day that whenever something like this happens, whenever there is some kind of a relationship tryst where a man and a woman are together and something happens, whether it's you know, outside of wedlock or in wedlock or whatever the case may be, all of the issues, all of the, all of the punishments, all of the blame, everything is always put on the woman because women are terrible people and we should just blame them for everything. Let me rephrase, women are not even people, they're just things. They're just baby vessels. <sighs> Could you imagine like a baby vessel like giving birth to another woman? That is disgusting. Like why? Why would they even waste their baby vessel for that? Like, I don't even understand. So basically, I love this book. Why? I really love, like, 
introspection and looking into the histories behind things like this, why people think the way they think, what it's it's like a murder mystery to me. Like I love murderers. Like don't say you love murderers because people are gonna think that you're crazy. I love to read and learn about serial killers. I don't specifically like serial killers on their own because that would be weird. But I love to read about them and learn about them and about how their brain works the way that it works. And I feel like a book like this is so on point to like society and why society thinks and does the things that it does. There are, in the last like week of watching YouTube videos, I have seen so many upcoming movies women who are having to defend themselves against a man I don't even know what that one was about but it like this the I'm gonna have to go back and like find the ad and figure out what that movie is called because I really want to watch it um it was like basically a woman was fighting for custody against her husband for her children or her ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or whoever her partner her baby daddy they were fighting over the children and people are saying that she's a bad mom because she stayed with him because he was abusive and she's like so you guys keep asking why i stayed but no one asks him why he didn't stop hitting me like why is all of the punishment and all of the blame and all of the everything why is it the woman's fault? It's not the woman's fault that she didn't leave. Should she leave? Yes, she should. But you can't always. It's not a perfect situation. But also, the man should have never hit her in the first place. Like, that. why does no one ask him why, why, why didn't he stop hitting her? When a woman is raped, it is her fault because of whatever it was that she was doing. It's never the man's fault for being the one with the penis that he's using it properly. It's always the woman's fault because like, I don't know, she was wearing a burqa that day. Like women get raped regardless of what they're wearing or what they're doing or whether they're drunk or whether they're sober. The only common denominator between a woman being raped in any situation is that there's a sexual predator involved, whether male, female or otherwise, there's a sexual predator involved. Like that's the common denominator in anyone being raped. It's never the victim's fault. It's always the predator's fault. But yet somehow as a society, we haven't figured that out yet. Why am I going on a rant? This is why I don't talk about classics. This is why we, <laughs> why? Fahrenheit 451, 1984, The Scarlet Letter. Not boring. I think that if a book makes you think more about the world that you're in, how it pertains to your society and how you can use the lessons that you learned from this book into your modern day. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the racism, the sexism, the absolute disregard for people who are disabled, people who are not white, straight, cisgendered males. Funnily enough, most of those books are written by white, straight, cisgendered males. It's not that classics are boring. It's what we consider a classic can tend to be boring. There are some great classics out there or what I think should be classics out there that are not necessarily labeled a classic and are not boring. Becca C. Smith has a great channel, Forgotten Female Fiction, where she highlights women from the past centuries that wrote these really amazing fully thought out fully flushed stories that are classics because they were written in that time period of a classic but people have pushed them aside and not looked at them because they are not written by these white straight cisgendered heterosexual males and so they can't be considered a classic and I feel like that's wrong it's like a whole other thing okay like that's a spiel for another day when I, I'm, I'm not the person to discuss this, like you need to find a person who has like some kind of a thesis program, I don't know. Like there's a, a much more highly educated person out there that can discuss this than me, but classics are not for me other than the few random ones that get thrown in. And that's why I don't typically, I don't force myself to read classics. I will try them and if I don't become engaged, I don't enjoy it, I toss it and I move on to the next one because I know there will be some that I enjoy, but most of them I don't. Now, let's discuss modern day books being page turners. Are there books out there modern day that focus solely on being a page turner? Absolutely. Modern day books as far as like romance novels, which are great in some cases, uh, YA books, which are great in some cases, those type of genres, women's fiction, things that are not 
necessarily perceived to be the greatest of all time. They're just things, you know, to give your women so they're, you know, dumb and being in a corner reading somewhere and you don't have to deal with them whatever. Like those books are fine. Like there's nothing inherently wrong with them. And these are typically the books that I would rate like a three star, like the House of Night series or um, a lot of crime novels, uh, James Patterson, uh, things like that that are just okay. They're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. There's they may have like and one or two things that's questionable, but there's nothing harmful. Uh, it's just it, you know, it's not great. But then there are book series that are modern day book series that I think really highlight things that we're trying to do. And are they perfect? No. One example of this, in my opinion, it's an opinion, guys, we're talking opinions here. Um, I would say the Shadowhunter novels are more than just a page turner. Like, are they a page turner? Absolutely. But the further that you get into the series, the more that Cassie has grown as a writer. I think that she puts a lot of things in there that really deal with current modern day issues as far as a government that doesn't understand the needs of its people not being racist not being sexist not being against people who are not straight white and cisgendered one of her primary couples in the series involves a bisexual male and a gay male and there are interracial relationships there are interspecies relationships there are just so many different things that is brought into that and these people that are trying to change the world for the better overthrowing a government that is uh, antiquated and barbaric and doesn't make sense for modern times like I feel like those kinds of things when you get those things into a book it becomes more than just a page turner it becomes something that is helping you learn understand and grow and I think that's kind of the important thing and um, that I take away from books and those are the books that I enjoy more. Books where I want to do more research, books where I learn things about my own self or the own world, my own world that I live in, those are the books that I enjoy. Now is that to say that there aren't romance novels like Well Met and Well Played that I rated five stars that have nothing to do with anything? Absolutely not. Sometimes I just enjoy a great page turner and that's okay. There are many different types of books for many different types of people and I am one of those people who may take me a little bit of digging, but I can find a book that I will like in any genre. Like there will be a book that I like in any genre, but that's the kind of reader that I am. It may take me a while to find that book, but I will find it. So I think you really just have to hone in what your reading levels are, what you like to read, what you look for in a book. So if you think that classics are boring, what you should look into is the books that you enjoy that are modern day books and find those parallels in a classic. So if you enjoy retellings of Shakespeare, you probably will enjoy a Shakespeare. So if you feel like you do know things, there are definitely, I'm sure, like 120% that there are booktubers out there who have made videos like, if you like this modern book, try this classic book. I guarantee you they're out there. There is some version of that existing and vice versa. If there are classic books that you enjoy, a lot of modern day books are retellings of classics. So if you have a classic that you love, but you want to bring it into the 21st century, find a retelling of a classic that you love. Are you going to probably know how the story is going to go? Yes, but it's going to put a new spin on it. It's going to put some new information into it and it's going to give you more thoughts and ideas into it. It doesn't have to just be a page turner. There's so many books out there and I think that like if there were 10 classic books and 10 modern day books and you wanted to lump them all together, you probably could. But there are hundreds of thousands of millions of books out there and it may take some searching and it may take some digging, but if you prefer one over the other, you can find something in the crossover that you will enjoy as well. Okay? Did any of that answer Michael's question? I don't really know. I kind of just went on a 20 minute tangent. Let's get to today's creator spotlight and move on from the crazy. Day 17 is Charlie Dorset. Charlie is primarily a author tubers. So her channel is mostly writing related content. She does a lot of live streams and a lot of discussion videos about 
Um, she works on short stories and things like that so there are uh, different things on short stories and also on other types of um, like RPGs all kinds of different things there. Very creative person who has a lot of creative hobbies. So their channel is very interspersed with different things like that. Also she's currently doing Vlogmas so there are plenty of videos for you to watch currently so make sure that you go and check her out. If you have any thoughts, ideas, comments, questions, concerns about anything that I ranted about today, <laughs> please hit up the comment section and we'll continue our chat there because obviously I have a lot to say. That is all I have for today. If you don't want to miss anything in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!